Hey everybody, Real Estate Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. Got an interesting story out of Fortune. And I think it's interesting because it's about the debt debacle. We're hearing about this. It's gonna get crazy in the next couple of weeks. The rhetoric, the back and forth, the aggressive threats and all of this stuff's gonna happen, but it's about housing this time. Check this out. The housing market, this is the title. A housing market correction would regain new life if the U.S. defaults, says Moody's chief economist. Now, before I read the story, the article, let's just make sure everybody knows this. Moody's is 100% wrong all the time. Why? Because they're reactive. They're not proactive. They don't tell you things ahead of time. This is interesting that they're actually coming out and making this bold call. Um, and this is just from the headline. Uh, in the past, Moody's was always wrong. They were wrong about MBSs. They were wrong about all this stuff that's going on right now with inflation. Point being is that they're technically always wrong. Um, but don't take my advice. I'm not a financial advisor or a financial professional. I'm just a dude with a bro hawk and a, and a dream. No, wait, that's my brother. I'm the real estate ninja. All right, diving into this story. The U.S. Treasury could run out of cash as soon as early June. That could deliver a big hit to the housing market. Speaking in front of Congress, now, now look at the title again, right? The housing market correction would regain new life, all right? So it makes it sound like it's going to correct and go up, right? New life, breathe new life, something good. Let's go into the story. Speaking in front of Congress earlier this month, Moody's analyst, analytics chief economist Mark Zandi told senators that by his calculation, the U.S. Treasury could run out of cash as soon as early in June if Congress doesn't act. Isn't that interesting that Moody's chief economist was telling them this? Why aren't the people from the Treasury telling this? Seriously, think about this. Think about this. A chief analyst from Moody's is telling the government how much the government has left in money. Scary, huh? All right. It says, um, if Congress doesn't act and the U.S. were to default, it, it'd have broad economic consequences. Well, no duh. C, in the unlikely scenario that the U.S. Treasury were to default or even appear like it might default, financial markets uh, would put upward pressure on the long-term rates like mortgage rates. The average 30-year fixed rate, which sits at 6.55 as of Friday, he says, would go back above 7% if a default looked likely. Another big jump in mortgage rates would be a gut punch for many home buyers and sellers who were at the brunt of last year's mortgage rate shock. Already, national housing affordability has reached levels not seen since the housing bubble, housing bubble era if mortgage rates were to spike again. So now I wanna go back to the title. They make the title seem, and they're real clever with their wordsmithing, that, that the, the housing could be breathing again. My point being is that it seems like everyone is trying to grab these headlines to where it grabs people's attention. And what's the one thing that would grab a lot of people's attention is if housing prices were to pick up again. Not that housing prices are crashing. We all know that. It's happening right now. But what if you had a headline out there that makes it feel like new life? Now, I know I get it, like new life, meaning that the housing correction is going to keep going or get worse. But that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. It's almost like they're trying to deceive people. Put down in the comment section what you think about that title. It says right here, um, uh, U.S. home prices, which are already down 3% from the 2022 peak. Put down also in the comment section if you agree with that. Do you think that housing prices are down 3% right now? Let me know in your area or what you're seeing in Zillow around the country um, if they're down just 3% from the 2022 peak. Uh, to fall... 8.6% peak to trough this cycle. I completely disagree with that. I think we're going to see 20% and more. And I think in large, and that's just a, across the country, literally 20%. And I believe personally, and this is what I teach in the real estate course. If you guys want to take a look at it, I'll put a link down below because it's so easy to identify this stuff. And I believe that you are going to see corrections well over 50% in houses across the country in the large metropolitan areas that blew up the most, right? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. But across the board, 20% would be an easy metric when you take into effect how expensive the houses are this time, unlike 2008. The people make pretty much about the same money, not much more on a national average, right? today as opposed to back then. And then you take into effect things like the massive amounts of layoffs that are already starting and are about to happen. The inflation that is raging right now that didn't even exist really back in 2008, 2007. 
you start taking all those factors in and all of a sudden you start figuring out, oh my gosh, we have got ourselves a whale of an opportunity here. And that's what you need to get ready for, all right? So it says right here, Zillow is also concerned because they're going to lose their business. Because if they're not talking into buying and selling homes and everything stops, they don't make any money. On Thursday, Zillow published an article with the headline, a debt ceiling default would send the U.S. housing market back into a deep freeze. Pretty sure it's still there, Zillow. You have nothing to worry about. I mean, we're, we're there. While Zillow economist Jeff Tucker acknowledges that a U.S. default would be unlikely, he agrees that it'd see mortgage rates go higher and put the housing market back into a sharp slowdown. If the U.S. were to enter default in the coming months, one certain consequence would be rising debt yields and interest rates, introducing default risk. And I completely agree with that. If the U.S. defaults, we're going to see bonds explode higher as far as the yield. It, things are going to go up really quick and get really nasty. Do I think that they're going to default? Honestly, no. Do I think they're going to push it to the last minute to try and shove some kind of extra regulation uh, down our throats? Yes. If the U.S. were to default, Zillow predicts an average 30-year fixed mortgage rate would spike to a peak of 8.4%. Let me ask you this. If the U.S. defaulted, seriously, if it did, do you honestly think that mortgage rates would just sit at 8.4? I think they'd be upwards of 10, even 12% for a short period of time because you're talking mass panic. Remember the days where, you know, you never thought that oil could go to zero because everybody needs it, yet it traded at like negative 40 bucks during the pandemic? <laughs> Point being is, when things get wacky, things get wacky. It says here, any major disruption to the economy and debt markets will have major repercussions for the housing market, chilling sales, and raising borrowing costs. Well, let's put it this way. Honestly, you don't need to even worry about the debt uh, destruction. Why? Because the American consumer is officially broke. The savings rate is declining. The credit card uh, rates or the credit card balances are exploding right now. Repossessions are exploding again. Everything's getting more expensive. So the fact of the matter is, there's not gonna be a whole lot of people that can buy houses. And until the, the economy actually really, really turns, the stock market starts turning down, the Federal Reserve is not going to lower rates. So we've got ourselves one heck of a long trek ahead of us. But the good news is, and I wanna leave you with this, is the longer you have to prepare, the more you're gonna be ready and the wealthier you're going to be able to get from this entire debacle. Remember, use this as a way to gain wealth and to be good with, with other people's property that you're gonna be buying and taking over and renting out to other people. But my point being is we're trying to warn the world, but only few will listen. So with that being said, I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm gonna put a link to the course below if you'd like to take a look at it. The Real Estate Ninja is out.